this surface is a coating of steel, and we wanted to know the um, feature of the surface and uh, the roughness is one of the feature. So we wanted to calculate the roughness to quantify to get, to get some numbers and also to work at different scales. So Covenant did use an IFM and also a white light interferometer to, to measure the surface. So working on different scales. And the conclusion is, um, you will see it, I will show you. Um, on the second page, this is a raw data set coming from the AFM. So you can recognize um, a surface coming from an AFM because usually we use this kind of colors to display the AFM, um, the brown color. And you can see there is some light brown and dark brown. So there is a kind of a step because the color itself is related to the height actually. And here you can see a 3D view on, of the surface with a step, which is obvious now, and some lines. So the document is dynamic. If I click on the 3D, I can even move, and I hope you can see that the 3D view is moving here. And I can see some more details, but still in one color, which is brown. So in the next page, I wanted to display the same surface, but this time with a different range of colors. So we call it the palette. So I changed the palette. And I figure out that I have some information here in the background and also on the, on the, on the top of the surface. But still, I have some lines. And those lines, actually, it's well known in the AFM, SPM uh, technology. It's due to the, the scanning. And it's obvious here when, when we can see the lines. So on the right hand side, you can see some workflow. And the workflow is actually showing every step that I used to, to, to do some post treatment with the surface. So the first thing, the first operation I've done is uh, a level line by line. So I can either click here in the document or here in the workflow. And when I click, I can show what operation has been done here. And you can see the color here and here. So we still have the step and, and this is a result. So I get some information saying, for example, the scanning direction of correction was line by line, not column by column. And then the trying was so the software was trying to, to put all the line of the same reference. So very useful for the SPM. So that on the next page, I can see that the result is quite nice. I do have um, surface still with the same color, but this time without any lines or due to the scanning, without any steps. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice surface and it's more close to the reality actually. On the next page, I wanted to extract the profile because when we say roughness, we can say roughness with 2D or roughness with uh, 3D. And roughness in 2D is called RA, as you may know. So from this profile here, I wanted to analyze some, some features on the profile. So you can see the surface here, which is still the same surface again with a profile. And this blue line is a profile coming from this area. And I displayed this table that shows the roughness, so RA. And it says that the roughness is this value. When we use the L filter, so L filter is um, a filter that is going to separate waviness and roughness with 80 microns. So what I found interesting is if I move the profile on the surface here, then first the profile itself has been um, refreshed. So the full document is dynamic and still the value of the roughness is still in the same scale, which makes sense. And now, I would like to change the length of the profile. 
So if I click here and enlarge a profile, the length of the profile is maybe three times the, the original profile, but the roughness is still in the same range. So the first conclusion, which makes sense, is that the roughness is not depending on the length of the profile, but at least here it's, it's obvious. So I know the roughness and I did use that cutoff to separate. And now the question of the scales is coming. So I wanted to figure out about which scales are on this surface. Because sometimes we can, we can hesitate between two different cutoff and what is waviness, what is roughness and so on. So <clears throat> here we have this profile again. And I hope you can see the straight line here. So the profile here is coming from, I mean, the blue line here is coming from that area in the surface. And that view, let me click on it. So this view here is actually a representation of the profile with at different scales. For example, if I, if I filter that profile with a very small cutoff, in order to get some um, micro roughness, even noise, we call it noise, um, I would have the information in the very first line here, that one on the top, the green one, saying it's flat. And if I <clears throat> filter the profile with a, um, a bigger cutoff, then I'm, I'm going to have the information of the form or the contour, but the form, which is the bottom line, the last line here. And you can see some, I would not say waviness, it's more than just waviness at this scale here. And what we can see is four big scales. One is micro roughness here, roughness in the middle and waviness and form. And if I move the profile, you can see we are still working at the same, same scale. So that's interesting to see that depending on what you want to see, you're going to choose this or this um, cutoff value. So we could see some very fine information with the AFM. And that is what we expect from an AFM, actually. So let me go back on the previous page, because we have the RA, so the roughness and see it's now 16 and this roughness is very useful to qualify to characterize the surface but it's not the only one <clears throat> you can see uh, it's smaller here but you can see some rq parameter rsk rku rz rk actually you have a lot of parameters because um, let's suppose that the surface is kind of flat if you have some peaks and or if you have a flat surface and some uh, holes then for some reasons the roughness may be the same but if the surface is in, in contact with another surface with two parts then the features or the behavior of the surface will be totally different although the roughness is the same so it's very important to know that it's possible to use uh, some other uh, parameters. So if I double click on the table, and if I want to go for another parameter, you can see the list is quite long. So it's not the point today to list all the parameters, but there are some parameters that could be very, very significant uh, depending on the on what you want to know on the surface, what you want to, to quantify. So this is kind of basic extract profile roughness, and we can turn into something very, very um, more advanced with uh, analysis. So on the next page, that one, you know it. On the next page, you can see some di diagrams, histograms, and curves. So let me talk about it. Um, this profile here is coming from that surface. So 
it's clear. We have the histogram here in gray, and that shows the number of points of the surface. So this histogram means we have a lot of information, a lot of points in the middle, in the lower middle of the surface. And we have a few holes here and some kind of high peaks probably here. And we know that from the histogram. So if we look at the histogram of the profile now, so with 2D this time, the, the distribution curve is more, um, the distribution is more flat. There is no specific uh, peak, there is no specific hole. And it makes sense because if you go, if you look at the, that straight line, there is no hole. And the red line here is called the Abbott curve. So it's a cumulative curve. And we, we, we can display here. So this curve is exactly the same. We can display the volume, the number of peaks that we have in terms of quantity and the number of holes. So that means this information is quite interesting because imagine you have some friction between two parts. And you know that you're gonna have some material to be removed when you um, when the parts are, are touched together. And uh, holes will be filled uh, with oil, for example. So to quantify this area, and this area is important. So if I click on the profile, if I move the profile and I go along a hole, in the blue here, then now it's obvious that we have a lot of volume, a lot of um, hole. So the, the feature is different. And if I go along the peak, it's going to be the opposite. Oh, a lot of information in, in, in positive on top on the, on, on the average. Um, and we can expect that this is a volume that is going to be removed from the surface. So we call it um, a bot curve. So it's very interesting to see that. On the next page, I wanted to know, so still very advanced, <clears throat> I wanted to know if there is some kind of direction. So this diagram here is based on the FFT. So it's a texture direction. So you can see when I click here, there is um, this um, part of the workflow that has been selected. And if I click here, the average power spectrum density, then it's still here. So here the information is, okay, there is no specific direction because the isotropy is above 30%. So I do have a quite nice document, um, a very nice document actually, composed of nine pages. So it's very easy and efficient to create, to generate a report and to publish. And if you want to publish this kind of report, you can go to file and you can save the document as a PDF to share with some uh, client or customers or colleagues. And um, you can also save as a MNT file. So MNT stands for mountains um, software. So <clears throat> we have another measurement. So, and I would like to compare this surface with another surface. So let me click here at the very top of the workflow. When I click here, I can change the data set from this one to another one. So see, it's different. So that one was a previous one, and that one is going to be the next one. And if I click on open, which is over here because my uh, operating system is in French, but don't worry, it's going to be English. Um, you can see a new picture, a new surface, but still with the same exactly the same uh, analysis and different values. Well, different values, but still in the same 
uh, range because it's, it's the same sample and the same instrument. So I'm glad we have the same range of value. And again, you can save and publish and it's easy.